How you doing, folks? I'm Chris Graham, and this is episode four of Sporting Bet's Road to Cheltenham program. With me today, as ever, is um, the man who steered Seymour Business to Gold Cup way back in 1999, and Sporting Bet ambassador Mick Fitzgerald. How are you doing? I'm very good, Chris. Thank you. Excellent. And our betting man, our head of media, it's the one and only Ross Wiseman. How are you doing, Ross? Great form, thanks, Chris. Excellent. Right, guys, let's start the episode on a rather sombre note. Newbury, of course, on Saturday, extraordinary scenes. Um, two horses believed to be ex- electrocuted in the paddock and the meeting was subsequently abandoned. Mick, in all your years in horse racing, have you saw anything like this? Never. Uh, absolutely bizarre. And people just stunned mm. by what's happened. And I think Newbury made the right call as well, abandoning the rest of the meeting, because, you know, who knows what might have happened. Mm. Ross, you were there. You were in the paddock, weren't you? Well, Chris, a picture. Yeah, I was literally 10 yards away from the, the first incident, which happened to, to Kit Cassidy of, uh, of Nicky's. And uh, I was standing with Martin Pipe, and it was very apparent something strange was happening. Uh, of course, now we look back on it, one of the one of the most unsavoury and uh, appalling incidents we'll ever see on a, on a race course. So anybody who was there, who witnessed it on the day, won't forget it. It'll be with them for a long time. But uh, we move on. Hopefully, uh, all the horses and all the people involved w- w- can get over what was a, a you know a truly awful awful Absolutely. moment. But um, you know, it was disappointing that racing had to go off. But I'm with Mickey. No choice for Newbury. They did the right thing. Absolutely. And commiserations, the connections of the the, the fallen horses. Um, it seems a bit sick asking this question but another key meeting has been abandoned here and it really really will have affected uh, the festival plans for the trainers just four weeks away at the festival this would have messed the schedules up a bit wouldn't it yeah it does of course the man that i was associated for many years nicky anderson of course he he plots his cheltenham he's got all his preparations planned out places that he wants to run the horse so it fits into their schedule for their mm-hmm. fitness and that will definitely have upset that now and you're just still unsure about horses' targets, which races mm-hmm. you've got to go for, and that's what all these trial races are about. Absolutely. Let's, let's move on to something more positive. Warwick on Saturday, Finning's Rainbow, um, Nicky Henderson's horse, of course, running the Kingmaker Novices Chase. We saw Long Run win that so convincingly last year. Finning's Rainbow didn't quite win it as impressively as that at all. What did you think of that, mate? Well, disappointed, I'd have mm. to say. Because the only thing I would say is I was over at Leopardstown at the weekend and I saw Adrian Maguire. He used to train for the and the one thing he said to me was, I hope they're not going to mess around with him today and let him just bowl along. But there was a lot of pace in the race and they were very mindful of that. And the thing is, trial race is all about teaching the horses to settle that's what they were trying to do Andrew Tinkler had a pretty tough job and he did it well he got Finian's Rainbow to relax a little bit but because they rode him differently the horse was a little bit confused and he made a few mistakes on the way around it mm-hmm. Warwick's not the easiest course in the in the world to jump around I was disappointed with the end result because it looked like he was making very hard work of it if he's going to win an Arkle he's got to be adaptable he's got to be able to change his style of running mm-hmm. to suit and that would be the only concern for me I, I think the jury is still out for me Sure, and, and let's talk about the Arco Ross. Um, did Finney's Rainbow price change for the, the race? Well, Finney's Rainbow was 9 to 2 pre race, Chris, and 9 to 2 after, which is, you know, we were speaking before we came on air today. Very rare that a horse of that calibre would put in a winning, winning performance and the odds not contract. So the Sporting but Odds Compire is clearly not impressed with that. I think there's still some proving to go for the horse, and he's now co favourites of three. We've got Gizeo at 9 to 2, and Medimit, who was so impressive. At Sandown just uh, just a week or so ago uh, at 92 as well. One horse for me that's still interesting though is, is Captain Chris, just beaten that day by because uh, I would be interested to see what Mick thought. But Captain Chris that day of the Hobbs team, I think it jumped maybe maybe one of the eight fences. Barely jumped a twig that day. Uh, Mick it was only a couple lengths behind. A bit cleaner fencing that could go close at 12 to one. I think. Well, I know the Hobbs team really like this horse. Uh, he's very sweet. And Philip Hobbs, the trainer as well, he really rates him. And if the ground dries, I think that'll be a big plus and it'll be a big help for Captain Chris. I wouldn't rule him out. Definitely. Okay. Uh, Mick, you were at Leperston on Saturday about the races for the Irish Hennessy meeting. A few bubbles burst at that meeting. Let's talk about the big race though, and Kempes went in the Irish Hennessy ahead of the favourite John Cole. What did you make of that? I think it was it was interesting to see Kempes, he grade one winner on decent ground over three miles one mm-hmm. at Punchestown when he beat China Rock. He was ridden with restraint, given a very good ride by David Casey and he crept into the race. But the thing that I liked is he got a little bit close to the second last. He just gave him a little squeeze, he jumped straight into the bridle and jumped the last fence like it was the first. Mm-hmm. And I think there was a lot left in the tank with mm-hmm. that horse. And with the possibility of a real cutthroat race in the Gold Cup, 
Kempes for me, he's a bit of value, and I think you know you could do a lot worse in the back him each way. Yeah, yeah well, Max pretty keen on the, his Gold Cup chances. Was what price is Kempes for the Gold Cup? Well, Kempes now, Chris, is a fourteen to one chance to win the Gold Cup. Uh, I think that's a fair price about uh, a horse clearly carrying those colours. That won't. Uh, need any convincing for some punters to get involved with the JP McManus course but you know the race is panning out very nicely for me as Mick said it's got the look of a cutthroat contest tons of pace around and you've even got the likes of Corto Star who may well get a free run in this, this race Mick with the, the plenty of pace involved but at the moment betting with Sporting with 7-2 favourites Imperial Commander 6-1 to one, Demon 13-2 long run 7-1 to one, Corto Star and then you've got the, 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 the other protagonists sitting in behind I think it's a wide open race could be a great way to end the festival this year Absolutely. Um, let's look ahead to the festival and the Mix Festival tip every week. Last week he raised a few eyebrows when he tipped up Summersby in the, in the Ryan here. This week we're looking at the World Hard Door. I think it's a simple question to ask you, Mick. Are you a big box man or are you a Grand Crew man? I'm a fan of a big box fan. <laughs> the only worry I have with, with big boxes is unbeaten over hurdles. His bubble's got to burst sometime. Mm -hmm. I just hope it's not in the World Hurdle. But I'm really interested in one horse here. But the great thing about sporting bet is in these big races, you get your money back with a non runner. Mm -hmm. Oscar Whiskey. Yeah. I was very impressed with him down at Force last. He's arsed us one over two miles five at Cheltenham. He's got a lot of class. And Nicky Henderson's still unsure about which race to run him in. So he could be an interesting one at a big price. As we say, sportingbet.com, non runner, no bet is a massive incentive. Sure. Russ, give us a wee summary of the World Hurdle bet. Well, at the moment, six to five on Big Bucks, Chris. And uh, we've mentioned this a couple of times now. Speaking to the odds compiles at Sporting Bet, they're still keen to get this horse in the book. That's a horse they want to take on every time it runs. It looks like it's going to get chinned, but it's still still to happen yet. And as Mick said, you, you're going to get a good price about a horse that's a, a proven and worthy champion. I was with David Pipe on Saturday, and uh, Grand Crew uh, is the apple of that uh, stable's eye now. They're not the power stable they used to be maybe a decade, decade ago, Mick, but that horse still uh, was so wildly impressive, wasn't it, last mm. time out at Cheltenham. And 9-4 uh, to four chance for that. Murad, 9-1. to one. And the horse that Mick mentioned there, Oscar Whiskey, 14-1. to one. And as you mentioned, Mick, no runner, no bet. That really does give you that extra incentive to back that horse. If it does go, you're going to get to the post at 14 to 1. That looks like a decent price. Nice one. Well, it's, it's big bucks for a third consecutive World Hurdle for Mick. OK, we've got loads of questions from Mick this week. My particular favourite was from Steve from Grimsby, who asked whether, after another unconvincing win over fences uh, by Punchestown on Friday, should they go back to hurdling with him in the World, uh, in the world Hurdle at the festival? He's got good form over hurdles at Cheltenham in the World Hurdle. Of course, it looked like he was going to beat Big Bucks at one stage in the World Hurdle. He's been unconvincing as a chaser. He scrambled home against Pasco the other day. Of course, Arsted suffered a win problem in the race as well, which makes the, the win even less mm -hmm. impressive. The only thing was, it was Nicky Henderson's 2000 winner, so he'll always remember it. But it was disappointing. He's looked unconvincing as a chaser punches town. Maybe the time has come for him to try hurdles again. Perhaps. That would certainly add a bit of spice to the, the world hurdle of punches town's turned back up to take on big bucks. We're going to leave it there, guys. We're back again next week. We'll be looking back at the action from Ascot, where Pride of Dalkett is due to turn up in the Ascot chase. So until then, we'll see you later. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.